So the shoulder is a very involved joint and there are lots of conditions that can lead to shoulder pain. Not all of them need surgery. Some of the more common conditions uh, in the shoulder that, that end up undergoing surgery include rotator cuff tears, instability, and arthritis. Arthritis is more common as we get older and similar to knee and hip arthritis, which is more commonly talked about, shoulder arthritis can be treated with injections, therapy, arthroscopic surgery, as well as replacement type surgery. A shoulder replacement is similar to a knee and hip replacement, which are more well known. Essentially, an incision is made in the front of the shoulder. We remove the bad cartilage and bone and replace it with metal and plastic. This relieves the pain from the arthritis. There are different types of shoulder replacement. The three different types of shoulder replacement include a hemiarthroplasty, a total shoulder arthroplasty, and a reverse total shoulder arthroplasty. A hemiarthroplasty is used in younger patients uh, and replaces simply just the ball and leaves the socket alone. This allows for less restrictions after surgery and a longer lasting joint, although it may lead to incomplete relief of pain as we're only replacing half the joint. A total shoulder or anatomic shoulder arthroplasty replaces the shoulder, both the ball and the socket. The ball is replaced with metal and the socket is replaced with plastic. This allows for better relief of pain but may include some limitations afterwards as, as lifting and certain activities could potentially loosen some of that plastic implant. And finally, there is a reverse total shoulder arthroplasty or constrained total shoulder arthroplasty, which are the same. And essentially that takes the ball and places it on the socket side and the socket on the ball side. We use this type of shoulder arthroplasty for really significant bony deformities as well as large tears or tears in the rotator cuff. This type of replacement, although it has less motion than an anatomic or total shoulder replacement, it has an easier recovery and allows a shoulder arthritis to be addressed in a patient who does not have a well-functioning rotator cuff. Other thoughts I have about shoulder replacements is that they're not for everybody. Your shoulder arthritis and or rotator cuff tear is likely better managed by therapy and injections and maybe a minimally invasive surgery when you're younger and when you're more active. As we get older and become less active, if that pain persists, shoulder arthroplasty may be an option for you. The risks with shoulder replacement include infection and dislocation, as well as bone loss and loosening. These are all large, big problems if you're a young athlete. If you're older, you tend to place less stress on your shoulder and these shoulder replacements tend to hold up fairly well. So I don't necessarily recommend shoulder replacements for everybody, but for the right patient in the right situation, these can be life-changing operations.